I'm Tara Bradner, and this is Hopeful Hints, an infertility podcast where you will receive quick, hopeful hints to guide you through infertility. Here, you will find education, inspiration, and most importantly, find peace as you walk through this journey to fulfill your family vision. Welcome to Hopeful Hints. I'm your host, Dr. Tara Bradner, and we are back for part two of our two-part series on improving your communication as a couple when going through infertility with licensed counselor, Kathy Quillett of the Tennessee Reproductive Therapy Group. Welcome Hi, back. I'm back. <laughs> Yoo-hoo. If you haven't listened to part one, please go listen. These are short, quick episodes. That's something that I enjoy about my own podcast is that they are short. You can listen to them quickly. So go listen to part one for some red flags or signs of that your communication might be drifting or some red flags as a couple during infertility. This week, we're going to focus on ways to improve communication as a couple and just some things that you guys can focus on it, no matter what stage of, once again, I always say what stage of infertility you're in, but whatever stage as a couple you might be in. Last week, we talked about perhaps sitting on opposite ends of the couch versus uh, arms around each other, holding hands or somewhere in the middle. So no matter where you find yourself on the scale or meter of your current situation while going through infertility, these hints, hopeful hints will apply to you. So Kathy, let's dive right in. What are some ways, take it away, ways to improve communication. Okay. Think back to the beginning of your relationship, wherever you are, just think back. Did you go miniature golfing? Did you go on dates? Did you go to the bar? How many hours at a time did you talk? I remember one of the first times my husband and I talked, we talked for five hours and you're playing the get to know you game. You're focusing on your friendship. You're having fun. You're enjoying yourself. That is open communication. We're enjoying each other. It's flirty. It's fun, right? That I mean, that fire, I don't know how or why life extinguishes it so quickly, but it does. And then you throw an infertility and marriage just in general becomes a little bit more like, did you pay our taxes? Um, I mean, it's February right now. Happy Hallmark month, but it's more like, Hey, did you do the dishes? Then where are we going to go on Valentine's day? Right. I, I love that my husband and I, and I'm, I I'm the driver on this, so I'm not adapting to him. We just boycott it because Valentine's day is a whole lot of pressure that I don't think we need. Um, but what was friendship like for you? We cannot have good, safe, emotional, vulnerable communication with each other. If we're not feeling safe in our friendship. So if you haven't gone out on a date for a while, or if you haven't gone out for a date and not talked about infertility for a while, recreate one of your dates that you loved and enjoyed when you guys were dating. Go bowl and don't talk about anything serious. Don't talk about anything at the house, but like focus on giving each other like pats on the butt when somebody gets a spare. Go out to dinner and like I remember one time my husband and I went to a county fair and I'm not going to tell you what we counted, but we counted things about like people watching. Can you do that at a bar rather than thinking, okay, well, today's day 14. We have to go home and have sex. Don't drink too much. You didn't wear tight underwear. Did you like that is a relationship killer. Okay. So focus on your friendship is a really big thing. Carve out time and space for a community, a, a, a big conversation turn off the television, put down your phones, position your bodies together where it is clear you're giving the other person 100% of their, your attention. Okay. I mean, therapists are made fun of. I think we are as, okay, it's a safe space. You can use your feeling words. Tell me how, so what I hear you saying is this, That's active listening. If somebody says something to you and they're saying, I feel really hurt when, well, I didn't do that. That's not active listening. Active listening is no rebuttal. Active listening is bobbleheading. Active listening is putting your hand on their knee and saying, that must be so hard. 
I'm so sorry you felt so alone in that. It's not argumentative. I mean, think of a, a kindergarten classroom when everybody gets really out of control and yelling and the teacher needs their attention. She turns out the light and whispers. Communication doesn't happen when we're trying to one-up each other, when we're trying to win, or when we're yelling over each other. I always tell my couples, and I mean, we've done a lot of work around this, my husband and I too, there are, think of three people in your relationship, you, your partner, and your marriage. If you are in the middle of an argument and you feel like you need to win, your partner loses, but so does your marriage and vice versa. But if you're active listening and like my husband, Tyler comes to me and says, I felt really offended. If my rebuttal is, well, I felt offended last time you did this, or remember last time you did this, or you've done this before, his back is to a corner and he loses. And then so do we for the night. But if I were to say, you know, again, he says, Kath, that offended me. If I'm like, babe, I hear you. I'm so sorry that what I intended to communicate came, came across to you as offensive. Do you accept my apology? And how can I communicate that better to you next time? I win, he wins, our relationship wins. The conversation's over in 10 minutes, right? Instead of like four hours and two blowups, okay? So be on the side of team marriage, use active listening. How do you do that? First of all, and this is not my opinion, this is substantiated by the Gottman Institute out in Seattle, we have to use a soft startup. A soft startup is not, well, a, a harsh startup on the contrary is, why didn't you do the dishes? I went to the store. You said you were going to do the dishes. Why didn't you do the dishes? A soft startup is, honey, I'm confused. We mentioned that you would do the dishes while I was gone. If it's a harsh startup, he's leaving the conversation. He's out. He doesn't want to participate in it. If it's a soft startup, he can say, you know what? I got distracted. Let me go do that right now. He can say, I'm so sorry. My mom called. He can say, the game got really good. I knew you were going to notice it. Let me go pause the game now and I'll take care of that. I'm sorry if that was dishonoring to you. And we can use a soft startup by using an iMessage. An iMessage is not a you message. A you message is, you hurt me. You are negative when you did not show up for the appointment. And I message is, I felt really hurt today when you didn't show up for the appointment. I feel overwhelmed when I have to remind you to call the doctor instead of why didn't you call the doctor? Like you said, right? Each one of each one of these examples says, I'm here with you. I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. You are still the most important person to me in this room. And I want us to be better. I always tell my husband, I always tell my clients, you have to be better after a disagreement. If not, the disagreement or the argument is for not. And we don't have to argue, argue. If we just say, I feel frustrated. Rather than why are you always a jerk? You only want to have sex when? I want to have sex with you more often. I want us to work on our physical intimacy rather than, well, there's a lot of crude things I can insert there that mm -hmm. I've heard. And so we're, your... we're working on our friendship. We're carving out time where our body language and everything can say, I'm here with you and you're the most important thing. We are on team marriage, which means we're focusing on and giving the other person the benefit of the doubt on behalf of our marriage so that all three parties can walk away successfully. We're actively listening. So that's the psychobabble feedback. We're using a soft startup versus a harsh startup. That's how you present the argument. And we're using I messages rather than you messages. There are, I mean, what I'm not taking into consideration here is the history of your arguments, family of origin style. You guys might feel like we're in this deep. We're past the point of this. 
I have a practice in Tennessee. If you're in Tennessee, tennesseereproductivetherapy.com. I have a coaching business that can help you outside of that. Okay. Email me. I'm happy to help you work on this. Both of you, even if you're the culprit of a lot of this in a judgment-free zone, it can be worked on always. As long as there's love, it can be worked on. Kathy, this was hands down amazing. I want everybody, this should be like a prerequisite. Listen to this as you start infertility treatment. To like preserve as you it start before marriage. Yes. But also what I tell my couples all the time is infertility is hard. Pregnancy after infertility is hard. And then you have a baby and you bring it home. Yeah. Even if you're like, we're not in conflict, we do so much premarital work. We don't do uh, bringing baby homework. There's no pre-baby counseling. And also your visits with your doctor, you are going to see your medical provider, your OBGYN, midwife, whatever, six to eight times before you have a baby, you're going to have one six month checkup after you bring your baby home. And then you're on your own. The pediatrician isn't going to ask you as a mom, how you're doing. The pediatrician is not going to ask how your marriage is. Mm -hmm. Your risk of postpartum depression and anxiety after infertility skyrockets work on your marriage now so that you can cope through infertility so that you can live well in pregnancy. So you can birth in a pleasant experience, but also you can just be rock star parents that your kids are jealous of one day and a, a, aspire to be like, and have a marriage that makes them go, Ew, you guys love each other. That's weird. Oh, I like work on it now. I have tears in my eyes. Take your car for an oil change before you take it to the junkyard. Do not let your car get to that junkyard. Don't do it. There's still time to save it and spare the junkyard. I mean, imagine if we gave ourselves, like, imagine if the government, okay, likes to have its hands in a lot. It's not a political statement. It just is. But imagine if our insurance government, whatever was like, you have five marriage checks up, checkups a year. That would be amazing. How could marriage be different? Yep. We said, moms, you became a mom. Here are five free sessions for you. We need to be doing that. That's just the thing. We are, we're not proactive. We're reactive. The average couple waits five years too long to start therapy. Five years. One, two, three, four, five. Raising my hand. <laughs> That's guilty. So Open about it. much. That's so much pain in a relationship if we don't tend to it right away. If we're not on team marriage, we're going to have to be looking for our second one. And we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. And I also heard during infertility, things that may not be at bay or at rest or issues will come up. They're more likely to come up during or after infertility. They're going to always, they're going to follow you through. So now you're dragging old muck into another mucky situation. Pregnancy does not cure the mental health implications of infertility. Nope. It doesn't. It can't. Nope. Nope. Because then you'll be on a helicopter bleeding at 32 weeks like I was, and you'll have more trauma stacked on top of that. And then you'll have a C-section stacked on top of that. And you'll have just more and more and more if you're going into it unprepared. Prepare Hence why now. we're in this field. <laughs> yes. And I just, I just like, as a healthcare provider, we need to do better taking care of postpartum as well, especially after infertility, which is just so needed during pregnancy, after infertility. I have many patients I help through that and it's just so needed. And someone who gets it like Kathy, Tennessee reproductive therapy can help you at any stage as well. I'm just a huge fan of Kathy's. Mm, Um, I just, I, as a healthcare professional, I just believe so much in what she does and have seen so many wonderful things come from her. So I will link everything for Kathy in today's show notes, Kathy, thank you for all you do for this community in Tennessee, outside of Tennessee and beyond. If you enjoy today's show, please head over and hit subscribe or leave a review for hopeful hints and infertility podcasts. Thank you so much for listening and we'll see you back here next week, Tuesday.